Booptube and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review and today we're looking at the newest beer from Innocent Gun and I must say even before I tried this I kind of creamed in my pants when I opened this up. Uh, this beer apparently will really only be in Alberta here in, uh, in Canada. Um, the LCBO did not take it and uh, I don't know if it's going to be anywhere else. I, I was told Alberta. I don't know if Nova Scotia or New Brunswick will pick it up. Um, but Alberta is. So for those of you in Alberta, you can get your hands on this stuff. And yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to do this. Yeah. Innocent Gun Espresso Barley Wine. So we went from, you know, always basically doing the same style except for the odd stout here and there. And, uh one or two IPAs to making a barley wine. Now, Innocent Gun is well known for malts more than hops, so I'm going to assume an English style barley wine, which makes me even more happy. And then to add some some espresso beans in there plus a barrel it makes this spectacular in my eyes. Uh, what do we have on here? It was um, carefully matured for 37 days Prior to uh, release, um, Innocent Gun Espresso Barley Wine. Rich barley wine infused with roasted coffee, beans, and spices. Oak aged beer. 8.4% alcohol by volume. The beans had been roasted and ground to their to Innocent Gun's specifications. They finished it with cardamom. Okay, I like cardamom. Cloves. Not a big fan of cloves. And mace. Mace? I got some mace over there. I'm going to get maced later tonight. Warming brew, perfect for enjoying by the fire as the colder nights come. Sorry. I thought something bad was about to happen. Let's jump into it. We got the Innocent Gun glass here. There's some water in it because I rinsed it out since it hasn't been used in like... Three years. It's been sitting in a cupboard. I like to use the bigger Innocent Gun glasses myself. Oh. My God. Oh my God, I love that. Oh my God, I love that. Um, I don't have a flashlight near me, so I can't really get the color to come through for you. But it's a beautiful mahogany brown. The head is a beautiful off-white uh, sort of mocha head. It's fading rather quickly, though. I did not expect the head to fade just that quickly. There we go. Wow. That, oh, there you go. You can get the mahogany right there. I love this. I love this color. This looks like the bottle. I mean, it's awesome. You guys didn't need a, you guys could have used a clear bottle, and it still would have, yeah, um, so, to do a sniff test now. Oh, god damn! Oh. Oh, 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 really? LCBO, first thing I have to say is, Fuck you. I want to drink this stuff all the time. If it, Well, I shouldn't say I want to drink it all the time because I haven't drank it yet, but I'd like to sniff it all the time, uh, for sure. Oh, the, the coffee just bursts into your nostrils. Uh, dark, deep, dark coffee with that slight touch of sourness that uh, high-end coffees have. But roasty, dark, somewhat sweet, and slightly sour. Lots of caramel, lots of roastiness. The cloves pop out. Out of the bottle, I can pick up the cardamom. Out of the glass, I can't. Out of the glass, I'm just getting like uh, roasted malts, caramel, and coffee. 
out of the bottle, I'm getting the cloves, I'm getting the caramel, I'm getting the coffee, I'm getting a roast, I'm getting some vanilla. Uh, so both smell awesome, but the bottle by far smells better. Let's try the beer. Cheers. Wow. I would argue that that is probably the most complex beer Innocent Gun has ever made. Uh, normally, normally they're not adding all that much to the beer. And it, what you're getting is mostly what the barrel or the chips or whatever they've used in their ochreator has added to the beer. Um, this time, it's so complex and most of the most of what I'm tasting is the spices and is the uh, beer itself and the barrel is kind of hidden behind. I don't know if that's just the age of the beer because Innocent Gun beers, um, much like any oak aged beer, goes the same route as a wine. It has unfortunate periods and the t taste does change. Even from week to week the taste can change minutely or largely, it all matters. Uh, so I don't know if I'm getting this in a time where the barrel is just on the low end or if this is what it really should be like, but regardless it doesn't matter, it's a complex beer that's showing off more facets than an Innocent Gun beer normally does. It's 8.4% alcohol, is there a warming? Yes, a slight warming, but it's it, it more comes from like, it, I, I shouldn't say warming as much as it's a, uh, there is a warming, but it's more like a spiciness from the coffee and the uh, cloves mixing together, right at the back of your th tongue, and right here in the throat, and then nothing the whole way down. So this is a very, very dangerous beer. I don't think you would normally drink it and go, ooh, this is an 8% alcohol beer, because I wouldn't drink it and go, this is an 8% alcohol beer. The barley wine itself very very sweet you're getting you're getting like a butterscotch almost like Werther's original butterscotch in there mixed with a little bit of roastiness sort of like a, sort of like a slightly burnt toffee so butterscotch sweetness a burnt toffee and then a very apparent English hoppiness on the back end just that dirtiness sort of sort of like a fuggles or a stid or a styrian would give you um uh, or even goldings i mean it, it just has that dirty like you licked a mud puddle type of uh emanation at the back end the cloves come right in in the very middle and they follow all the way through to the end to add to that bitterness uh the coffee Deep, dark roast coffee. I mean, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful coffee. Full-on black coffee taste. <coughs> Excuse me. With that black coffee taste, hits right after the sweetness and follows all the way through. But it's weird because you get that black coffee taste, but you're not left with that black coffee bitterness because the bitterness is being taken up by the cloves and by the... Uh, by the hops themselves, there's a slight coffee emanation left over, but it's so minute that uh, unless you've actually chewed an espresso bean or anything like that, you wouldn't really see it as a coffee bitterness. It doesn't come off as coffee as much as just a bitter taste, and that's after you've actually gotten the coffee taste. The, the fade, the emanation away, you wouldn't pick up as coffee unless you've chewed on an espresso bean or something like that. <sighs> This, this is an amazing beer. It's so complex. Oh. Little hints of vanilla come through. The oaky tannins, though, come through more than the hints of vanilla. I'm not picking up any of the other flavors that I normally get with an oak aged beer. I'm not picking up any, like, fig or anything like that. But that's perfectly fine. I mean, there, you don't need that with everything else that's in this beer. Uh, do I taste the cardamom? Sort of, but I mean, I don't know if I actually taste or if that's just this guy going, hey, it's in there. And it's probably just this guy going, hey, it's in there. Because I could smell it, but I don't get that, uh, I don't get that taste, really. I don't get what I know as cardamom in my mouth.
This is a great beer in that it's really kind of a mixture of a amazing barley wine and an amazing like winter beer. Because the coffee it kind of makes it kind of wintry, but when you when you're adding in what what I'm tasting in there, the cloves, the vanilla, the uh, oaky tannins, you're adding in what I what what my mind is telling me is cardamom. That really just screams to like a winter warmer flavors, where the barley wine can work for that too. But I I, I don't even know. I I don't know what to say. I love this beer, I, and that's all I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna say I love the beer. I love the beer. Uh, out of ten on this beer, I'm going to give it a. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go. That coffee taste is awesome. I'm gonna go with 9.25. Um, if a little more of the vanilla came through, a little more, maybe some coconut, and maybe a little less of the cloves, this would be easily a 9.75. But uh, the cloves just a little too much for me personally. Uh, but other than that, the beer is spectacular. It is well made, and I give them kudos because it is the most complex Innocent Gun brew I've ever had. Uh, so this is second only for me to the, uh, well, to the Bourbon Dark Ale and the, so third only, the Bourbon Dark Ale and the Irish Whiskey Stout. I love both of those beers, and this one is also an amazing brew. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.